Hey, welcome to the Driven Billionaire channel. Today, we're going to see our top picks for the five early signs of inflation that you can watch out for. Make sure to watch the entire video because number one is probably the last sign before things go really bad with the economy. A disclaimer alert is now in effect. Since in this channel and in this video, we do not recommend or advise you to buy or sell any stocks, cryptocurrencies, or any other assets and goods. The purpose of this video is for education and information only. We are not responsible for your decisions. Number five, utility stock prices. Utility stocks are known to have mostly very stable prices and better dividend returns than the average stocks. For these reasons, they've been seen as stocks that actually behave like bonds. That means that since prices are expected to gradually go higher and not lower, whenever there is a prolonged sell-off of utility stocks, it will be a way of representing a Wall Street consensus that inflation and interest rates are likely to rise. However, Wall Street can be tremendously short-sighted and we all know that investors love to create hysteria now and then. This sell-off shouldn't be a one-week panic, but rather a significant sustained drop in utility stock prices. So make sure you watch out and don't follow Wall Street or the news when they start to panic around the subject just because prices have fallen for a week. Think long term and you should be able to see it coming from far away. Number four, government's stimulus. Now, this one we think most of you are familiar with, especially after 2008 and again in 2020. This is a monetary attempt of governments around the globe to stimulate the economy during times of crises by borrowing and printing more money in order to give it, mostly, to big corporations, businesses and their citizens in need. Of course, stimulus can also refer to fiscal policies, but that's not how we're going to be looking at it in this video. In 2020, we have seen governments giving out stimulus packages in order to contain the damage impacts that economies would have due to the pandemic. These stimulus packages were given in loans, checks, tax rebates, increased welfare and other methods. But what does all this mean in the end? Well. It means that the governments are printing or borrowing more and more money every time you see one of these stimulus packages being approved. These packages generate a higher supply of cash when the demand is still the same, which drives the value of that paper down and therefore forcing prices to go up and people to pay more for the same product. You probably already understand where we're going with this, so let's summarize everything. The more governments print cash or borrow money, the less value their currency will hold, which leads to inflation. Number three, commodities prices. Commodities such as raw materials like copper and precious metals like gold and silver have their prices as good indicators for early signs of inflation. The reason that investors look at commodity prices as a leading indicator of expected inflation is that commodities respond quickly to widespread economic shocks. When prices of commodities peak, it's never a good sign, and it can be seen through two basic theories. One suggests commodity prices react quickly to general economic shocks, such as increases in demand. A good example is when an increase in the price of commodities like gold occurs, which often means that people are losing trust in paper money, and once that happens, people look to tangible assets due to the store value that it can hold. The second is that changes in prices react to systemic shocks, such as natural catastrophes or even wars. Take a hurricane, for example. It can decimate the supply of agricultural products and result in increased supply costs. But by the time it reaches consumers, overall prices would have increased and inflation would follow. Another example would be the 1970s energy crisis. It had an evident correlation between oil and its lack of supply. It resulted in higher oil prices and it snowballed to increase the price of goods and services. Remember, 
oil is a major input in the economy and is used in critical activities such as manufacturing products and fueling cars. If the cost of oil increases, then the cost of manufacturing plastics, chemical products and gas will also rise and be passed on to consumers. Just remember, it's never a good sign when prices of commodities have a sharp rise. Number two, factory capacity utilization. Specialists, economists and investors love to use the factory capacity utilization indicators for signs of inflation. It's often believed that if the utilization rate goes over 84%, inflation is going to increase. When markets grow rapidly, it results in companies no longer being able to fulfill the demand and have to increase their utilization in order to do so, which results in price inflation. However, when the demand for a product weakens, the excess capacity means that not enough demand exists anymore to require the expansion of production. Number one, wages and unemployment rates. Inflation loosely means too much money is going around for too few or little amounts of goods and services. AKA, the value of money goes down, so in order for you to buy something, you need more money to get the value of whatever it is you want to buy. Governments around the globe pump large amounts of money into the economy, with the main goal being to reduce interest rates and make it cheaper for businesses and people to borrow it. However, when business conditions weaken, nobody wants to borrow money in fear of creating more debt. For example, there is no reason why a business would open another store if the main one is already not doing well. Also, consumers don't want to borrow money to spend it because they're afraid of being laid off next month. Let's think of it like this. As demand increases, so do prices. As prices rise, employees demand higher wages. And if nobody in the labor market is willing to do it for less, the current employees get higher wages. That, in turn, pushes up prices. And if by any chance the unemployment rate goes up, people and businesses can't put up with the high prices because they're not being paid at all, or they can't get a job that pays them enough, and inflation surges. That is why wages and unemployment rates are great indicators to use when trying to watch out for inflation. In the end, inflation comes down to one thing, a lot of money going around with no value whatsoever. Sure, you may have different triggers that can lead to inflation and, as we've seen throughout history, it can vary from wars to hurricanes to governments and empires devaluing their own money by making or printing fake money. It's always good to watch out for the indicators mentioned in the video to be prepared, but it's even better to diversify and play it safe rather than having all your eggs in one basket in case something goes wrong unexpectedly. Hope you guys have enjoyed the video. Let us know in the comment section below if you have any other indicators you like to use to watch out for inflation. Also, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel. See you guys on the next video. Take care.